Maybe. Probably not. If he throws coffee on you, I'm not, <laughs> not going to be upset. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Press X Podcast, episode 58, your weekly podcast for gaming news and opinions coming at you each and every Monday at noon Eastern. I am Kevin McManus. With me, Kellen Willard. Hola. Nick Castle. Oh, hey, that's me. How you guys doing? A little tired. We just got out of a movie. You did? A yeah. good movie. Really good movie. The old mm-hmm. John Wick dose. Old? It's like a day old. The old John Wick <laughs> dose. Anyways. Um, so let's jump right into it. We actually do have kind of a lot of news, so we'll start off with what we always start off with, which is what we've been playing. Kellen, hmm? how about you start the segment? Uh, mostly Fire Emblem and Fire Emblem related things. Um, the Playing the uh, mobile game, mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. Heroes? Yeah, Fire Emblem Heroes, which just made me want to play Fire Emblem Fates, so I started doing that again. I guess it's, it did its job. <laughs> yeah, it did its job real well. I did some levels of that, and I was like, you know, I need to go through Halo Wars again, so I've done the first, like, eight chapters of that again. Preparing for Halo Wars 2. Might as well. I got nothing better to do, so. And it's not backwards compatible. I had to dig out my 360. Really? hmm That's kind of strange. Put it in the expo, and it was like, this game is not backwards compatible. For our list, go to this website. I'm like, oh, I hope my 360 still works. I'm <laughs> sure they're probably just saving it for, like, next week or something. Probably, but yeah. I don't know. That's really but strange, wasn't. actually kind of caught me off guard that's what i thought I was like that's kind of strange my 360 still works though learn that <laughs> good to know not many of them they kind of like discarded that game even when it was still out like even the servers well, went the, down well they shut that studio yeah. down. yeah it was so ensemble like, i think that's they why they did sounds right yeah so it kind of makes sense now that you think about it but it does suck that it's not backwards compatible the game's awesome i forgot how much i like that collector's edition too which one was it I mean, it's just like the steel case and then the double wide with like a book and a bunch of stuff in the back. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, but I it's also got like about. the rubber arm patch you can like put on a jacket that's still in my case. It's really nice. Do you like the helmet that you can put on a cat? Huh? The that's the Halo. <laughs> the Master Chief helmet that the you can put on a cat. Halo 3? Yeah, that's Halo 3. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a small enough head, you can hollow it out and wear it, but. Great. I don't. So. Wonderful. Yeah, that's about you all I've done, say. though. That and do something for Nick for a couple of days, but that's his own fault. Yeah. Had him help me build a computer. Oh, boy. But that is neither here nor there. It took up two days of my week, so, you know. That's only two. <laughs> I was like three and a half. Um, I guess we're jumping to me. Sure. I played a little bit of Tales of Berseria, uh, like Sunday, Monday, and a little bit more Yakuza. And then once Tuesday hit, uh, other than spending time with computer stuff, I played Neo. And that game is awesome. How difficult <clears throat> is it? I haven't hit the difficult parts yet because I okay. haven't put that many hours into it as much as I normally would, as much as I will this weekend after we film. But, um, yeah, like, I, I can tell it's going to be more difficult. The thing about it is, like, you're way faster, so you feel like, oh, I can dodge anything because you're used to Souls games where you're kind of feels like you're walking through mud yeah. for the most part. Not very acrobatic uh, like you are in this game. And this game also has, like, a spear. It's got a couple other weapons that have range. Mm-hmm. So you feel a lot safer and you feel faster. So you're like, okay, this is a win-win, right? And it's like, no. <laughs> uh, Souls games, especially Bloodborne, are more recently made to wear, especially Bloodborne too, uh, or Bloodborne also. Um, it's a blood- I knew he was going to get me on that. Uh, Bloodborne has a mechanic where if you get hit, Within a certain small time frame, if you hit that enemy back, you get Mm -hmm. to gain a bit of your health back. So something that would take 50% of your life, if you slash real quick and hit them back, you only end up losing like 25%. So in a sense, it's not like the game's punishing you that much for getting hit, as much as this game, Neo, where in a lot of scenarios, you can't get hit once or you're dead. Um... That's kind of early on how it goes. Uh, I'm sure once you grind, which it's easier to grind in this game, then it'll be a little different, I guess. But then you get to boss fights, and they're incredibly cheap. So uh, one-hit kills are a little bit more of a thing in this game Mm because, like I said, the name of this game, besides Neo, is Don't Get Hit. Um, So I don't know. It's... It's kind of weird because you put on all this big hulking armor like a samurai. You're like, okay, I can take a few hits. No, you can't. <laughs> you get hit once, stagger, and the other guys are like laughing at you, and they just claw you to death um, or poison you or do whatever. So it's just weird. It's 
it feels like, okay, I'm going to get in the soul's mindset and okay, I'll take a hit here. Okay. I'll take a hit there. I'll heal up and keep going. It's like, no, you, you already died at that point. So it's more brutal, I guess, than a souls game, but it's more fun too. Cause the cool part is they give you tutorials and there's like a narrator and there's so, a, a story yeah. like, like the Souls games have stories, but they they don't. It's a they lot have of lore. Reading. Yeah, you know they have it's, lore, but this actually is like a narrative. You're a bit more hands on with the story in those games. You have to find There's it yourself. There's cutscenes. Um, you pretty much have to figure it out yourself. Whereas this one, it's told to you. There's menus. There's lots of stuff going on. So you can't ever claim that you were like ignorant on something or you didn't know how some mechanic worked because there's a tutorial level <laughs> also. Um, so yeah, it's a bit more user friendly in that sense where it's like, okay, we're going to help you learn how to play this game because it's way more technical Mm -hmm. than souls games. But once you learn it, then it's like difficulty just spikes like crazy and probably doesn't let up for a while. So interested to see how you feel about it next week or whenever. Yeah. Yeah. Next next couple weeks. Next week I'll have at least triple the amount of time I put into it and I might either be triple the amount of frustration <laughs> at least or really you feel like I achieved something or probably just an alcoholic at that you point. Might, just, <laughs> might just drink it away. <laughs> drink the memory away. Is so it, yeah. Is, is that it for you? Uh, yeah. I'm at first like leading into uh, the game coming out. I was really surprised at the high scores because I mean the souls games usually kind of get in the eighties, something like that. But yeah. like even I think IGN dropped like a 9.6 on it. Mm-hmm. So this thing is definitely feels like it's earning its scores. Yeah, from the Souls fans that I know that have played mm-hmm. it, they're like liking it similar to a Bloodborne mm-hmm. slash some more. Um, yeah. So we'll see. I know it's like a eighty hour game. <laughs> Got a way to go. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so I've played three games, uh, this week. They're all sort of similar. They're all side scrollers. Uh, the first one's Braid, which is a shorter ish game. I think it took like five, six hours. It is a, uh, puzzle platformer, though you can just play it as a platformer if you really wanted to and beat it real quick, but that's not the point of the game. Uh, basically there's hidden puzzle pieces throughout the levels. You break your mind trying to figure out how to get these puzzle pieces. The mechanic in the game is time, and that's the entirety of the mechanic. You can rewind time in some, in like the next, it's built like Mario. So in the first world, you can just rewind time. So if you mess up, you can Prince of Persia it, go back in time. Uh, The next world, whenever you walk right, time moves forward. Whenever you walk left, it goes backward and you need to figure out how to open doors and kill enemies and do all the stuff using that mechanic. Then they start adding more. And as the game goes on, um, very, it takes a little while to wrap your brain around what you're doing. It sounds like the thinking man's game. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's (laughs) it's done by the same guy who made the witness. Um, Can we do this drunk? Uh, could barely do it sober. So that's not a good idea. (laughs) So no, but went through it, beat it. It was cool. Uh, lots of people call it pretentious, similar to The Witness. I think this is much worse than The Witness with that, but I enjoyed it. I think my problem is this came out when Xbox Live first started putting indie games, the uh, arcade or whatever, uh, out, and I think it just feels a little dated. Like, there's so many games sort of similar on it, that are a little much better yeah. at this point. It does have a twist, and I knew it had a twist, and the twist was really cool, but uh, beyond that, it was, it was fine. Next, I beat Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, which was the second PS4 uh, Shantae game. Really liked it. It's literally a 2D Zelda game, almost exactly. You, there's an open world. You talk to people to figure out where you need to go. It leads to a dungeon. The dungeon has a chest with an item. You use that item to beat the boss. You use that item to get to the next section of the open world. You talk to people. There's a dungeon. Repeat. Um, end of the game, difficulty curve, not fair. It just turns into instant death everywhere. Literally, it's a spike maze, and you need to use all of the stuff that you've got to get around all the spikes. Uh, Not a very fun way to end your game, guys. (laughs) Sounds like fun. So after that, I had so much fun with that ending that I decided to load up Shantae Half Genie Hero, uh, which I found out is not pronounced Half Genie Half Hero, which is a much better name. Uh, I don't know why they didn't go with that, but loaded that up. That game is not like the other Shantae games, and it is definitely my favorite. Uh, it First off, it's not 8-bit. 
it is it looks almost like a flash cartoon uh it, it's got that look going for it it was a kickstarter oh, okay um so it looks like a flash cartoon but the music has been amped up a whole lot a lot more energetic and shante always kind of danced but she's like actually dance every character in the game dances to the music the whole game which mm-hmm. is awesome and then the structure of the game is totally different. So there's like a hub world that's just a circle that kind of you walk around or whatever. But then you can fly up to the main map and choose where you want to go. And it's just levels. Like it literally says ready and end when you get to the end of it. And they're linear-ish levels that you go through. So it's more like a Mega Man. Then you beat the level, you get a power. You go back to the town, you have to do some stuff for other people, and then you get a new map location, you go there, it starts, it's a level, you beat it, you get a new power, and that's how it goes. Then the like Metroidvania part of it, which the other ones are Metroidvanias, this really isn't, I don't even know what to call this. Um, it, You can go back to those levels at any time, and they'll be like, I don't know, 8 to 15, depending on how big the map is different hidden collectibles in there so heart containers and stuff so you basically revisit old levels um but there's only a couple of them which i guess people were disappointed by but i actually really liked this structure a lot better i found it a lot easier you didn't need a fast travel system because it was just built in you choose what level you want to go to and everything i really liked the the art style i didn't like at first and then now i like it better it took a little while but i absolutely this game is the best side scroller since Shovel Knight. It's not as good as Shovel Knight, but it is really, really, really good. Um, I was going to say, I, I mean, I wish I played it because it came out last year, technically. I wish I played it before then, but uh, really surprised by the game. I'm working on the Platinum. I have all the trophies except for 100% it in under four hours. Uh, I already did the 100% and all the stupid trophies that are like, do this without being seen by this guy and stuff like that. Uh, so I just need to 100% it in under four hours. And I think I'm an hour and a half in, and I'm like 70% through. So There you go. Doing well. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I should have it platinum next You'll week. You'll mess it up. Very possible. Very, very, very I possible. Have faith. Uh, so, yeah, really like that game. So let's move on to the news. Lots of, lots of weird news this week, uh, kind of all over the place. Yeah. First off, Drawn to Death, which I don't know if you guys even remember this game because it's been so long. It was a uh, David Jaffe who made God of War Twisted Metal. It's his next project. It is a school, like high school kids notebook. He draws monsters and different things that a high school kid would. And then the game takes place within that world, which mm-hmm. is really awesome. It's a third person shooter. Um, it started out as free to play. It was in alpha or beta alpha probably i don't know for a really long time but like you could get a code to it and it had trophies and everything like Mm -hmm. i i have multiple trophies to this game kind of weird uh that it still isn't out yet and uh they basically axed that model and we're like hey this isn't working the way we wanted it to it's a 20 dollar game now it comes out april 4th Mm -hmm. um but it they even did that with not a trailer they did it with like an interview video where they kind of interviewed him and showed off some of the game it wasn't like an official trailer uh so how are we feeling about drawn to death's future that's cool never played it heard good things about it but whatever coming out at a time that it's not favorable to at least two of the people at this table i mean it's all of that's the same day as p5 Oh, the same. Oh, yeah, it is the same exact day. Yeah. Okay. Then all of us. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. could be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was unfortunate. I liked the game. Yeah. Uh, it's a little floaty. When you jump, it f- you don't feel weighted. Like you can kind of hold down jump and it feels like you're on the moon a little bit. And then you can double jump and things like that. But the characters were so cool. Mm-hmm. And they had some things in it that I really liked that would, like a, if a kid designed it, they would do that. Like there's a devil character and there's another character who like, has fire attacks and they can't hurt the devil character so if you use them against him it actually makes him stronger Mm -hmm. different things like that that they have uh that i think's really cool uh but the free-to-play model was bad i hated the way they did their free-to-play model basically you picked a weapon like you did the tutorial you picked a character you left with a character and two weapons and Mm -hmm. like that's what you had and then you had to pay to unlock the other stuff which is awful yeah that kind of sucks yeah um and i don't know if that was what they're gonna go with in the end or just for the beta thing but i'm glad they took it away i'm glad they're charging for it but yeah yeah, i'm sad definitely it's coming out uh the same day i'm not i mean i I won't be getting it at lunch 
summer maybe early we can fall. try it next year yeah. <laughs> and, and it's a f- it's four player max uh like competitive online mm-hmm. you know it, it's just a weird i hope it does well because it was a cool concept yeah it's neat but whatever i will try supporting it at some point in my life <laughs> yeah <laughs> nick will try to support it plus all of his game i mean all of his games are pretty good so uh, I mean, yeah, like I, the other two that you mentioned. Yes, yeah, so I, I hope uh, this works. So, next bit of news. Uh, something that I feel like we've been talking about every week. Another game's gone gold, and this time it's kind of a big one. It is Zelda. Mm-hmm. Zelda Breath of the Wild. Gone gold. Um, not super surprising. That game was supposed to come out in, like, 2014? Like, 2008 or 2015, maybe. And, and now just, it's carrying a system on its back. <laughs> they just kept delaying yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's carrying a system and carrying the coffin of another system, yeah. unfortunately. But it's a little announcement. That's cool. The one thing about uh, Nintendo games is when they go gold, the game is, like, finished. Like, they are games that don't have they are actually one finished, patches, yeah. Yeah, yeah. typically. Uh, very rare, so They finish cool. games. It's actually done. It exists. That's so cool. Zelda is an official game that exists. Next... Psychonauts 2, uh, very similar to Drawn to Death, except Psychonauts 2 not coming out for another year, got a close enough. Got an it's interview mm-hmm. trailer, I guess. Thing, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, Tim Schafer sat down. They played a little bit of the game. Looked really good. I'm I'm happy with mm-hmm. how it looks. Um, coming 2018. Uh, that was the first big. I think it's called Fig. Not 100% sure. I think it's called Fig, but it's like Kickstarter, but instead of oh, paying money, you're, yeah, yeah. Inve- you're mm-hmm. like literally investing, so you yeah, get yeah. money back. Uh, so this is going to be a big proof of concept for that, because I think this is the biggest thing that's used that in at least video games so far. That's a much better model than just giving them money. And I'm just going to go ahead and pair this real yeah, quick. Yeah, because you're also um, not held as much at their mercy hmm. Yeah, with Kickstarter, because I mean, there's still Mighty Number no. 9 people that don't have their kickstarter stuff yeah well the the whole thing about kickstarter and they make it clear it's like you're not pre-ordering the game you're not pre-ordering stuff they're like they have a vision you're paying to help that vision whether or not they do it not really Mm. not up to not your problem yeah Yeah, like they do whatever but just to pair that with uh some other psychonauts news that i was pretty happy about uh if the rumbus of ruins coming out the 18 21st of February, I believe. Something like that. We talked about it last week. Yeah. Uh, this week they announced that if you pre-order that, not only do you get a discount if you're a Plus member, uh, you also get the first game mm-hmm. in the up PS2 thing with trophies for free, which is awesome because it's a $10 game on the store. That's so cool. you get the VR thing basically for $8 and mm-hmm. you get the original game. Uh, haven't played the original game. Want to. I like it. S- supposed to be good. Yeah. Some people... Like Nightmare Before Christmas over the thing, like they absolutely yeah. Some love people it. worship it, and yeah. that's a little scary. But no, it's it's definitely worth free. I guess <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> worth free. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was I almost bought Psychonauts one mm-hmm. the day before they announced this, and I went to I was like really close, probably like I don't know sixty percent gonna buy it, seventy percent. Like I was getting real close. I was like, man, I really want to play something. I kind of want to play a platformer. And I almost went to Psychonauts, and I went with Shantae instead. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm glad I did because now I get it for free, and I get the VR one. Yeah. on yeah. top of that, so that's nice. Sounds like a good deal. Yeah, free. Uh, free, a good free deal. usually a good deal. Castlevania. Mm-hmm. Uh, the loved company Konami. Made this Whoa. beautiful thing called Castlevania. Uh, and Castlevania is coming to Netflix. Yeah. An animated series of Castlevania coming to Netflix. I saw this. I was like, I don't believe this is happening. And I clicked it. And it's like actual confirmed. They have people working on it. Yeah. This is something special. I think it's based on Castlevania 3. Yes. The one so, last I read. So it has some... They they It's going to be rated R. Mm-hmm. As well it should be. Which is interesting. Um, it's got a pretty decent writing team on it, too, from I, some of the names that I saw. I didn't see the writing team. I saw the producer. Mm-hmm. I think he, he might be directing it, but he's a produ- he uh, did Dread. Yeah. Um, Quality guy. Which we watched recently, actually, like yeah. last week. Yeah. Um, and he said, I believe his actual quote was, it's going to be rated R as fuck or something like that. 
Uh, so we'll see how this goes. And he says, I never watched a movie rated that. (laughs) He's, uh, he's super cocky about this for some reason. He's like, this is going to be the best adaptation of a video game, which is not very hard. You got to beat like silent Hill competition. Yeah. Um, I think you mean mortal Kombat. Oh, jeez. I'm not getting this. (laughs) I'm staying out of this one. Um, but yeah. So how do we feel? Castlevania, Netflix, rated R, animated guy from dread. Don't care about the games, might care about this. I would watch this. I'm not a big Castlevania guy, but this sounds pretty interesting. The cockiness kind of gets me like, okay, let's see what you got. You know, that sort of mindset. So That's how I felt, and then I clicked it, and I'm like, oh, this is just straight up Alice Cooper telling me. <laughs> 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 you got some black triangles painted on your face and stuff? I don't know Quality if you're telling guy. the truth. Yeah. It's a, uh, I mean... I don't care much for the mechanics of those games, but it's a cool concept, and I think that would lend yeah. itself well to what they're, what I guess they're trying to do with it. We'll find I'm interested. Out. I'll watch it. Yeah, I, I'll definitely watch it. I mean, I would watch basically any mm. video game animated thing that they announce just to check it out. Netflix um, has uh, got a pretty good batting average for me, so they're uh, they're picking up a lot of a lot of stuff recently. Like they keep announcing shows, so not not so yeah. much uh, movies anymore, but. Um, I mean, they'll they get did movies. They'll get like they ever done the hot Marvel movie out day one. I guess or like the, a couple they weeks have, before they fair. have Disney, uh, um, like Finding like Dory a, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, is all other on than there. that, Netflix is all TV now, which which is weird because it used to be all movies. But yeah, I mean, as far as the shows on there, I as I love pretty much most of the big headliners. So yeah, they also have the DC shows. Um, they're contracted. Netflix is contracted with them too. Mm-hmm. They still make uh, those. The animated. One? No, the, oh, the, the CW live action. One? Yeah. Oh, okay. So when they end, the season instantly goes on Netflix cool. now instead of having a break. That's period. awesome. Yeah, that's that's cool. a lot better for uh, and binging. They're, they're just not on Hulu anymore. Mm-hmm. That was the deal, I guess. So so. Take it down. You can have it here. Like, oh. Yeah. So uh, if you want to watch those, not on Hulu. So that's sweet. That's fine. Don't fall behind. Next up, uh, some retailers, GameStop, were talking about selling games up to three weeks early. Mm-hmm. So this is an interesting news story. I don't know if you saw any of this, but basically they were proposing this idea. And I was like, oh, that's a cool way to like keep the market interesting. The physical one comes out early. The digital one comes out later instead of the digital one coming out yeah. early like they do with movies, which mm-hmm. drives me freaking crazy. Yeah, that's weird. I never liked that either. Yeah, like, I don't know. That stuff just confuses me because I'm like, okay, I'll go buy the movie or I'll go on Amazon and get the movie. And it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I can. I can watch it portable. <laughs> cool. Um, Who wants so to I saw this headline. And I was like, oh, that's okay, a cool idea. Then I clicked it, and I read it. They just want to sell you the game that doesn't work three weeks early so it can sit on your shelf, and it'll For activate three weeks. in three weeks. They want you yeah. to pre-download your physical game. Yeah, that's and stupid. I'm like, all right, GameStop. I th- first, you wanted to sell digital used games, which is fine, I guess, if you figure out a way to do that. That's cool. Whatever, you revoke someone's key, you give it to someone else if it works like that. I don't fully understand, but yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't think it does, but, you know. Yeah, like, I don't know if it works like that, but if you think about it, there's a pool of keys, yeah, and one shuts off, and you just yeah. give it to somebody else, and that makes sense. You could technically do that. But, like, selling somebody a game early that's locked out on mm-hmm. their system for three weeks so they can, like, look at it, they they said it would build the hype of the release and stuff. I don't think it would that do just that. Pissed me I don't off. know. I've even uh, had full... Retail releases of I think Gears Two, I had two weeks early. Who cares? Like servers got reset, had a day one patch, blah blah, like all that stuff. Um, I mean, it was cool, kind of having like a small community of people who got to play it early. Mm-hmm. But I, it's not as fun as being able to find a match, you know, like that. What you want in shooters for or an online game. The for only sure. thing that shooter, yeah. you benefit from is like maybe like single player RPGs. Yeah, getting that for sure. So if you could get yeah. Mass Effect Andromeda three, weeks yeah, early. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm already doing Origin Access for that, so that's not a question. But um, I don't know. It was just weird. Yeah, I they're uh, they're really trying to come up with some way, some to way to get people in the store, you know, keep physical games live. But I, don't know, I feel like that's gonna make the mom and pop places and whoever else just break street date even more on. Yeah, to be fair, it said retailers, but I'm assuming GameStop's always the lead in these ideas. They're the loudest voice, yeah. Yeah. And and the dumbest. 
That <laughs> might be true. But yeah, if that leads to you places breaking street date three weeks early. Mm-hmm. All right. And not even like, Good. probably not even knowing. Yeah, unless around. they start locking your games, like consoles cannot yeah. play this game until like they start locking the physical ones. Then it wouldn't I've matter if they break street date because the game wouldn't work yeah, anyway. Yeah, I feel like department store who doesn't really know that much about the video game section is going to like, oh, well, they, that GameStop around the corner just opened up theirs you know three weeks early i guess we can too it's all right and then that's gonna lead to bans and stuff on yeah, xbox I, live and psn and just a whole string of mess i think they're also worried about like people hacking the thing to unlock the mm-hmm. restrictions just turn that off yeah. and don't connect so. online and i don't know i mean those are all like worst case scenarios but they seem pretty feasible to me yeah me too i i like i said i was like oh that's a cool interesting idea and then i was like oh this is just a terrible oh, stupid idea stupid, yeah yeah, yeah. I, I hate anything that tries to like like I think releases are a big thing mm-hmm. like the day something comes out and everybody's talking about it and it, oh yeah. it's it's a big deal and that's why I hate uh, Steam's green light thing where you can just play the game whatever the early access stuff like I hate all that I don't really I mean betas are necessary for like online things but when people just do betas yeah when they're doing for, stress tests for yeah doing server stress tests the you know fun of it basically like just to let people play it i think it really hurts your your game's impact when it comes out and because people are like i've already played this not a big fan yeah well when you do the beta like a week before the game comes out that's when it's stupid to me for honor yeah (laughs) (laughs) but if you do it like six months before and stuff like that then you know that kind of leaves a good impression on people but yeah when it's like hey you can wait a week and play the full retail game or if you do the like splatoon thing where it's like it's this hour because then you're really stress testing yeah because everybody's going on at that hour because it's the only time only, they only can time play. i can do mm-hmm. it yeah. so. uh next up south park the fractured butthole has been delayed uh it was originally supposed to come out the end of 2015 mm-hmm. or 2016 then it got delayed to march 2017 and now it's delayed to April 2017 March 2018. That was the oh. that was the release the new release window. A whole uh, what, 11, 12 months. <laughs> yeah, so we have anywhere in the next year. At some point in the next 16 months, we might see out. South Park. Um, that's okay with me. I wish once again that they had a release date. There's too many things coming out right now. I think it's fine to push that. I'll yeah, play they it. probably went. Oh, okay, let's do it March. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, April. Uh oh. Well, that was a mistake. Uh, yeah. So yeah. now they're just waiting till E3, basically, and then they're gonna pick their point where they're gonna put it. Probably. Him. So I'm I'm excited for this game. I want to play this game. This is another one where if you pre-order it, you get the first one. Uh, Stick of Truth, which is really cool. I love that model for uh, releasing a sequel. Me too. But. This is one of the things I, I don't remember many of my predictions for 2017, but I know this was on there. So a little a little piece of me was like, yeah, now we just need the Mass Effect announcement that that's delayed. No, and, and we can that's not uh, getting delayed. We can move on. Things will get ugly real fast if that happens. They already have. <laughs> Let's talk about Ubisoft some more. So Watch Dogs 2. This is just kind of a little story, but they were disappointed with the sales of Watch Dogs 2. They specifically said that it had soft sales. The first one sold really well based kind of on a lie. um, Slightly. Overhype, at least, yeah. On a broken promise and absolute uh, fake trailer with their their downgrades that everybody, oh, you downgraded the game. And typically I'm like, yeah, they always have to. Like, that's... Normal. Well, and years of hype to go with it. Yeah, that Theirs was, their downgrade thing was really bad. But yeah, they announced the game like six years yeah. early, which is also bad. Uh, I don't know why there was hype for this game. I never thought it looked good. And on top of that, it was on PS3 and 360. How next gen? Like, everybody's like, this is the next gen game. And I'm like, it's on the, the other. It's game. on the old gen, though. Yeah, I was like, how is this going to be the next gen game? But anyway, uh, they're disappointed with Watch Dogs 2 soft sales. They think that. Over time, it'll catch up. They think that it's going to be a Grand Theft Auto or a Call of Duty. Mm. I'm using big examples, but uh, Fallout 3, another good example. Yeah. Games that just sell pretty well on name alone. all the time throughout yeah, they, a year. They don't go out, yeah. And they, they stack I up. I wonder if uh, The Division kind of hurt people's expectations 
Ubisoft expectations at least? Uh, I think that's quite possible. I also think that uh, like Watch Dogs 2, once again, I didn't care. I didn't like the main character mm. just from like the trailers and everything. I didn't like the meme focused like yeah, yeah. hacking group that they were or anything like that. Um, so and like I said before, I didn't think that the first one was that cool in the no, beginning. The combat so. was, was pretty was cool. Fine. That was about it. The driving was great. Hated the characters. Oh my god, they were boring. Yeah, the <laughs> the driving was off. It I, was broken. It didn't I, work. I loved the uh, you could go in a boat and go in the water, and the cops couldn't get to you because they didn't have any sort of way they didn't to, have boats. Yeah. <laughs> to get to you. I was like, well, they thought this the game future. out really well. No boats allowed. They had the multiplayer where people just hop into your game and ruin your time that you're having. Yeah, yeah. Or they can like use their phone to mess with you and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Whatever. I'm not so. Does this shock anybody? Not no. even a little. Yeah. I I don't know. I think those are lofty expectations for it to even reach. They want it to be grand. Assassin's Creed. Yeah. The, and they're not. It does going not have the have, cloud Assassin's Creed does. Yeah. It's it's not going to. I think be they Assassin's want Creed. all their games to be Assassin's Creed. <laughs> That's fair. maybe they should just make Assassin's Creed. They're going to. I don't this think year. they want to think anymore. They just kind of want to put it on like, okay, this is this period of the year this is that period this is the period and then just like recycle yeah over and over and over here's like i can tell you their games for the next probably three yeah they don't want to create anymore (laughs) division (laughs) two that's gonna be a thing yeah we're gonna get a new tom clancy game something i'm sure yeah, we're they just get Watch Dogs three they just want to coast assassin's creed 17 you're welcome and just dance Ooh, a good game yeah, they just want to coast from here on out, it seems like. I would, too, if I were them. They did try Steep. That yeah. Didn't, that we didn't still haven't s- played Warcraft really very that. well, <laughs> but they tried. That game just, like, came out and I had no clue. Yeah, it they was. tried. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Zero marketing on that. Yeah, I, I don't think they were too, like... It was weird because they ended the their E3 show with Steep, so you would think that it's like a big thing. And mm-hmm. then it came out that year as well, I believe. They yeah. did the E3 yeah. mm-hmm. and it came out that year. And they didn't talk about it. It came out near something else that was big. I can't remember what, but it, Probably like it was just... Final Fantasy? It was, it was late in the year. It was pretty close it to it. It might have been Final Fantasy. But I was just like, what a weird... That's what I was playing at least when I saw weird like IGN or someone playing Steep. And I was like, this is out? <laughs> yeah, I saw it on Steam. I was like, okay. Like, we sit here and do these every week. <laughs> <laughs> and it still surprised me. It still snuck out on me. I read them every week. Oh, weird. I'm pretty sure he read Steep out loud, and I was like, oh, yeah, snowboarding. <laughs> I'm down. I think we talked about it, yeah. Hmm. Um, let's talk about Destiny. That's nice. So, Destiny 2 has been confirmed. Yeah. 2017, we are getting Destiny 2. I think they will absolutely uh, hit that date. Mm-hmm. It's going to be... Towards the end of PlayStation's press conference, probably. Oh yeah, 100%. Uh, I imagine they're partnered with PlayStation again, and we're gonna get the Destiny announcement at every PlayStation press conference for the next two yeah. years because that's that's what happened last time, and it got a little annoying. Um, so Destiny two, what do we want out of that? A story. I think we'll get that. Okay, that's all I want. Uh, oh, and a PC version. Yeah, PC, please. Um, I don't think you'll get that. There was talk of that. I saw it last week or two weeks ago. Maybe it was I 2016 where we saw something like that. I don't know. Uh, it needs to be on PC. It needs to be balanced better. And, yeah, better single player. Yeah, I, I would definitely want a single player that's more similar to Battleborn if they're going to go mm-hmm. the way that they did where you can play it by yourself if you want to, but it's really like a team group thing, almost like a Borderlands type deal. Um so I definitely want that. I want the I want a multiplayer mode, like a dedicated separate multiplayer mode where it's like an arena game and you pick up the guns and the maps are made for that so level. So Halo? Yeah, I want them to go back we to their... We want them to make Halo again. Yeah, I want them to <laughs> go back to their Halo roots with that because I really, really liked the multiplayer mm-hmm. of that game, but it was unbalanced because people had guns and uh, there's so many different variations and stuff and it's yeah. like, I don't know what's happening. I Just don't know how he killed me so fast, but he did. Similar to Injustice 2 with the armor that absolutely changes how the game is played yeah i mean that's all i wanted in destiny to begin with was a mode where all the guns were the same no powers blah 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 yeah. um and just like because i the like the power shooting mechanic was fun oh yeah game. it was really good uh there was nothing wrong with the combat it was just a little too much when you're 
not only trying to fight the guy with the way overpowered gun that you haven't had a chance to do raids in yeah, twenty four seven with his friends puts a shield down. And then down you have for like a titan and, yeah. slamming you from behind uh, like off to the side or something, and you're like, Oh, okay, well I didn't stand a chance. Yeah. Um I just I like doing the Titans. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I said, fun. I just wish that they had a standardized mode like Injustice Two. They have the armor thing and I've been watching a lot of the beta. Uh people have epic gear and stuff yeah. and it literally raises your strength and gives you slightly different moves or whatever. Um but then when you play like in the tournaments, it's standardized. This is the character this is, this this is, is their get, moves. Yeah. You're done. And I wish that Destiny had a mode like that where you could hop in and it's like, hey, this is the competitive mode where all things are equal. To yeah, thing. like, I don't know. Almost honestly, I wish they would just make it more like uh, Fantasy Star or something where I can enjoy and get everything out of single player or co-op and I don't have to play multiplayer mm-hmm. to unlock stuff. I mean, that's cool that they have the little bounty things and stuff like that, but if I could, like, not play multiplayer and them stick with the MMO kind of aspect of it mm-hmm. and not shy away from it and be scared. Yeah, that that was my next point. I want either that, what I just said, or just 100% go in on an MMO, yeah. big world, have like a PvP server or something, like an yeah. area that when you cross this, you're in PvP yeah. mode, except like, uh, you know, you can request like dual type thing, like yeah. matches with other people. Yeah, yeah. Just 100% make an MMO. Those yeah, are like that was one or the other. Don't th- do the weird. Then in I could do like I was doing on Old Republic and go pick on the little kids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you sure could. Yeah, that was the most annoying part to me about Destiny is that you could tell that they were kind of like dipping their toes in the MMO pool, mm-hmm. but like yeah. they didn't want to. They did not want to use like the word MMO. They, they never yeah. used the phrase. Similar yeah. with MOBA, how mm-hmm. nobody except I think Paragon was the only thing that was like MOBA. Yeah. Every other thing was like, nope. People would be like, is it a MOBA? No. Nope. Nope. It's very similar, but no. Nope. Yeah, they, they yeah. wouldn't. I don't know. Just some aspects that. of it, especially like just the concept of walking around, like us three walking around just shooting stuff or maybe finishing like dailies or something. And all of a sudden a big ship swoops in and there's like a big epic fight. Like that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, an idea or like conceptually, but I don't know. It just didn't feel like it because they didn't go full MMO. Yeah, I, I literally just want basically guild wars but first person with guns Mm -hmm. where they have these world bosses where you could be doing whatever and it wouldn't be a dragon because Mm -hmm. that wouldn't make sense but some sort of futuristic space thing attacks and everybody can work together and take it down uh and you get some sort of reward for that or it can just like destroy the world and it temporarily the world the terrain and I everything's wouldn't mind different. I thought that, being, that was um, so cool in Guild Wars. Like cool, yeah. Factions and stuff like that too. Like you're not always just the same good guys. Like there's different pockets that mm-hmm. you could be. Yeah, so there's you, so many things. So they could you do. get into like betrayals and stuff like that too. So oh, because like that. maybe I'm fighting Kellen, but the thing swoops down and all of a sudden. They're our enemy now, so mm-hmm. we can start fighting. That would be awesome. And then as soon as we're done, like, oh, that was Gosh. awesome. <laughs> ah, time to kill Kevin. That's yeah. what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah, that would be so cool. That's an awesome idea. We're probably not. It's probably going to be more of the same. It's just going to be more of the same because it but worked the first time. So yeah. yeah, if yeah, Destiny had a that, huge tail. Like so many people stuck yeah, with that game. Like, well, two it dipped at the beginning, but then the expansions and all that stuff kept getting better and better and better and better and pulling more people back in. So except for me. It almost did for me. It, whichever oh, one was the uh, winter or late fall one, uh, King Taken Take, King. King, yeah, that one almost got me. I even had two of them for free and still didn't download them. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I only played the core game, so yeah, that's, that's all, all my knowledge. I know their marketing and you know all the other stuff in the press conferences where they showed these expansions. They got better each time. Yeah, it, people love. It got me interested King. again, but I just never. I just felt ripped off because I paid 60 yeah. and then they're like, hey, if you pay 60, you get everything. And I'm like, hey, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, you mean everything for the first six months? That was the other half of that balance thing I was talking about. Not making people fight for that level 30 or whatever. And then so like hard two to weeks get there and then you can just make a character that's level yeah. 30. And then two weeks later, it's like, oh, you struggled for no reason. Yeah. You wasted was, time. That was <laughs> awesome. So I, I hope they fix all those uh, and they just make an MMO. Yeah, that, w- that would be the best. Straight honestly. up say this is an MMO. That'd be awesome. Uh, next, let's talk about Steam. So this is something that we're recording a little bit earlier uh, than we normally do. So I guess that's important to note. But Steam Greenlight is going away. Yay! I- I've been advocating this for a long time. 
Uh, they're replacing it with Steam Direct, which basically you have to sign up as a publisher and you have to pay to get your game onto the Steam, you know, storefront, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, their thought is that this will weed out a lot of like the complete garbage games and the games where people just took the free assets from everything and put it together <laughs> and made yeah. a thing and put it on Steam. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, their it's their first step towards curating steam which is good because it should be done yeah they talked about uh i think it was 60 percent of steam games released in 2016 60 percent because wow. they just allow whatever whatever, to whatever show up you have a thing put it on steam yeah. similar to iphones and you know android mm-hmm. games like that uh so this is their first step towards doing that i think that is an awesome idea i don't know if this is the best way to do it to make them pay because that, that might be an issue. Is they were them. <laughs> they talked <laughs> about the price. They said it could be $100 to $5,000. Mm-hmm. They haven't decided. They're working on whatever. Um, so, interesting. Also said they're working on a single-player game. Um, so, they they also said it's not Half-Life, Half-Life 3. Half-Life 3 oh. confirmed. <laughs> uh, next up, let's talk about E3. Okay. E3 is open to the public. Awesome. For the so f- first time in how long? <sighs> too long. Years, yeah. Way too long. Yeah. So yeah, it used to be open to the public, and then they stopped that, and then they did basically this press only thing. Now it's open to fifteen thousand people mm-hmm. can get in. By the time this podcast goes up, the the tickets will be on. Um, oh yeah. As far as I remember, because this is off the top, I think it, it's one fifty for a day and two fifty for the entire three day span. Uh, if you are one of the first thousand people, you get a discount on your ticket. I think you get a hundred dollars off if you're one of the first thousand. Those tickets are going to go like that. Yeah. They will not be in stock more no. than a minute or two. Yeah. Um. So let's talk kind of about the pros and cons of this. First off, I, I do want to make it clear. Uh, E3 is not like PAX or like it's not a show for the public, for I right. guess is the best way to put it. So they're not trying to please the public. They're trying to like show off their game mm-hmm. to actually market their game and get people interested and get the word out of the game and network with people. Well, and, yeah, it's not so much play test, play test, play test. Hey, come try our stuff. You know, stuff yeah, like, like you can do that, but like you're, Some stuff, yeah. you're playing games that are three years out, maybe yeah. two years out for sure. And like people played the Last Guardian at E3 in '06 or whenever it was mm-hmm. announced, whatever that was. Um, they had that book behind closed doors so you're not going there to like it's not like an amusement park ride yeah. like some of the other conventions are like yeah where everything's ready and done just people don't like cosplay and they hang out this is like you oh, know people will always cosplay this is a <laughs> that'll never go away media event for yes. the press it's media basically. focused yeah for the press um so i i would say like don't go there expecting to like run into your favorite you know, YouTuber or IGN person or Kotaku or whatever not, it's and not, be like, hey, what's up? Can you, you know what I mean? They're, they're going to be super busy. They're yeah, working. it's not yeah. Comic-Con for video games where you're exactly. going to have yeah. meet and greet and stuff like that. that. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah it's not a video game Comic-Con. Um, what it is good for is if you, I mean, I, I guess if you're just interested and you go in knowing that, you'll be fine. But it's good for if you uh, do want to get into either maybe you went to school for working on video games mm-hmm. or you want to be in the media or you want to you know work in marketing or something like that it's good for going there and meeting some people and yeah i'm sure there's a ton of like low to mid-level people in the oh, industry yeah, for sure to talk to yeah. and stuff like that yeah it's so. great if you're like a journalist and you want to actually get the scoop on some of these games mm-hmm. and stuff but i'm just saying don't go you'll probably play a couple games a day because the lines are there's gonna be <laughs> Literally two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the lines are going to be crazy, all that stuff. So I'm just saying temper your expectations. But I oh, guess yeah. it doesn't matter at this point because the tickets Those are more the events we'll where they'll bunch like 20 people into a room and they'll play it. They'll just show you. So it's like yeah. a behind closed doors demo. Like yeah. you watch someone play. So Yeah, they're like, this is our game. And this honestly, that'll play, get yeah. leaked on YouTube <laughs> a couple yeah, weeks later. Yeah. So. Yeah, and also probably the most important thing for people who don't know, the press conferences are not E3. Uh, some people right. may not realize Stays that. Days before. Right. You don't go yeah, yeah. to E3 and, like, you're, you're not going to get to watch Sony 
do their thing. You're not going to like that's that's not what you're getting invited to. You're getting invited to the show floor yeah. to check out the booths and what's going on there. Um, so just a couple of notes. Be for people. prepared if you're going in L.A. looking at about three hundred dollars uh, for all of them uh, each, you know, every day. And, yeah, you're probably not getting into the press conferences, assuming they're not changing things, too, mm-hmm. um, which is possible they might, like... They might EA's, give us a few small changes. Yeah. EA's already not there this year. Yeah. I believe yeah. they've announced that they're not going. Nintendo is, and they said they're going to do a more classic thing. Um, Say what you want about EA. They at least have a lot of playable stuff, and they're more entertainment. FIFA, um, Madden. Yeah, I mean... It's, doing good so far. <laughs> but, I mean, they're big on, like, show floor stuff and getting people involved in playing. So, you know? I think they're at a different building that's sort of close yeah, that you like could go to or that is open to the public. Like, they tried that. EA? Yeah. Yeah, last year, didn't they, tried they do that last an, year. an LA and a London or something like that? That sounds right. Okay. Yeah. Those aren't close at all. Eh, if you look at a globe, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> um, so... I guess if you you don't make it to the the E3 thing, you could go to EA and check out what EA, they have. Yeah. But lots of people <laughs> dropping out of E3 recently. Yeah. Lots of companies. Do we think this is like a call to be like, hey, look, your audience is going to be here. Maybe you shouldn't drop out type thing. Or why do you think they're opening it up to the public again? Just to spice it up, honestly. Um, I don't know if that's really going to do it. I Like I said, I think people kind of have the – misconception that it's all about big announcements you're going to be there when playstation's on stage announcing something they're live and that's not how it is yeah that's not at all what you're getting into now that's the thing like i would love to go because it would be awesome to be able to go there play three games record a thing yeah. be like this is what i played guys it was awesome blah 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 the next day do the same thing i would absolutely love that oh yeah it'd be fun to wander around in there but at the same time like it's literally you're just going to be standing in a line for hours yeah and that's your day I mean, yeah. it's like I could be on my couch enjoying the press conferences. Or in a theater watching the Sony. Yeah, like I love going sleep. to the theater <laughs> and watching Sony's thing. So, like, I don't know. It, it's, it's a, it's I don't a know. They one. would have to make it Comic-Con for video games. Uh, I mean, literally get, and here's our next panel. It's the Bungie team. And here's our next panel. It's, Boo. you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Kojima, you know, is the big one. Yeah. I'm sure I have his own booth, just like a little one just in there. <laughs> so, like, you would seriously need to make it like that to really warrant a lot of public um, participation, I mm-hmm. guess. Even PAX and stuff like that, but PAX is more, hey, here's a billion screens and consoles and whatever set up. Let's go play these games that are coming out relatively soon, whereas E3 is like, we're going to hit all of our big games mm-hmm. and big ideas at the moment. So, I don't know. Yeah. Cool to go to, but uh, just making sure people yeah. know what to expect. It's, from, it's one of those do it and say you did it sort of things that yeah, at went, the moment until they announce either. more changes, I guess. Yeah, I'm more interested now in what they're going to do next year. If this is like mm-hmm. an experiment yeah, uh, yeah. to open it up more or do something different entirely, we'll have to see. So let's move on to some questions. I also not only have questions here, but I have some comments. I just want to go over some of the comments from last week's video. Uh, we'll start with World's End. Always commenting. Uh, he said, "Our pre-order bonus is bad. Depends. Exclusive pre-order, ca- exclusive pre-order characters and fighting games equals fail. Exclusive steelbook case, soundtracks, art books. Well done. Um, I completely agree. And this is something that we didn't talk about last week, but I kind of wish I thought of bringing it up. Physical pre-order bonuses." Almost always an awesome idea. Is I that, love steelbooks. Is that yeah, a like pre-order book. bonus though, or is it just collector's edition? It, I've gotten special. Edition. I've gotten pre-order. It can be uh, one or the other. Books, yeah. Okay, because that always feels like a deluxe or whatever. Sometimes, sometimes okay. it's like the eighty-dollar edition. But I've mm-hmm. definitely, in fact, Persona Five. You get a steelbook if you pre-order it. Okay. Uh, the sixty-dollar version is a steelbook. Yeah. Oh, that's not just. Because it's the Take Your Heart edition is the one you're getting a steelbook for? No, the steelbook, okay. it, it's a limited, like, if you get it in the first batch, it's mm-hmm. in the steelbook, and the other ones are the regular. Gotcha. Normal. So, yeah, certain games do that, but that is rare. But art books, I've definitely seen art books for things. I know mm-hmm. King yeah, Hearts cool. 1.5 had an art book. Tomb nobody, Raider nobody came with that. an art book. Uh, Japanese games or based companies that make the games are a lot bigger on art and that kind of aspect of it, whereas Western's a little bit more towards, hey, get this cool rifle or something like in-game 
um, something like bonus. Yeah, and then another one, uh, soundtracks, which Gravity Rush yeah. 2 had a soundtrack pre-order that I thought was cool. It was like an app that you got mm-hmm. to download, and it played the concept art in the background while the music was playing. And I'm like, oh, that's a cool little... That's cool. That's why I like PC moment. versions of a lot of games, because they'll have a digital um, soundtrack that goes with it. You can download it. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of stuff does, yeah. Uh, next, we have D Swoop, who says, "Agree with you guys on pre-orders. Especially gets annoying when they're retailer specific. Yeah, they're that's awful. That, uh, that's the worst. Costumes I don't like that stuff, at yeah. GameStop and Amazon, and some of them. Sometimes it's like a store that barely exists in the United States. Mm. It's like I've never even heard of that store, but they have some exclusive pre-order for some reason." One of the ones that I remember, it wasn't a pre-order, but it was similar, was Injustice 1. You had to have the mobile game and do different stuff in the mobile game to unlock skins for the real game. I was like, okay, guys. No. That's a little ridiculous. The, you're, being, you're being silly. Um, so, yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, another one, Mystic, stopped by. We talked about him mm-hmm. uh, on the podcast. He said, thanks so much for the kind words, my friend. I'm glad I played a part in you getting onto YouTube. There's no better feeling. Uh, I talked about, we were talking about underrated YouTubers. Uh, Mystic, one of my favorites, does the Let's Talk PlayStation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of the main reasons I started the channel. So it was awesome to have him stop by and check out the video. And then finally, the Scarlet Gamer stopped by, said, I'm behind on your videos, but I love them so much. Keep it up. I'll try. Thank you. Um, we can do that. Sometimes. It's very difficult at times. <laughs> we yes. have our moments. So another question for you guys. Uh, what are your thoughts on difficulty modes in games? I almost always like having different difficulty modes. Uh, depending on the game, I a lot of times play on mid or easier if I just want to get the story. Um, if there's not much of a story, yeah, I want to make it challenging, make it interesting. That's almost always a plus for me. I like the few games, uh, I guess it's more towards like Grand Theft Auto type games where they have sort of the adaptive difficulty where there's not, you get to choose one, it will start you off, which feels kind of like a normal or easy little, or something yeah. like that. And the better you do and the more you're hitting all the shots, you're doing all this, it'll ramp up the difficulty. But if you die or if you screw up a lot or it looks like you're having trouble, it'll kind of ramp back down. I know it's kind of a hard thing to design yeah from the get-go sure. but i like that idea in games way more than here's five difficulties and this one's tied to achievements this one's you know, that but, i don't like um yeah i don't like <laughs> that the only thing i really like as far as selection i like better rewards so if you play on the highest difficulty you're gonna gain x amount more gold or you're going to gain that, that end game. Uh, I like that because it gives you sort of like a reason to do it rather than I'm going to do this for the achievement or for the sake of saying I did it. It's like, okay, who cares? Um, but he, what he was saying about story-based games, I would almost always put it on easy because – or easy or normal – because I feel like if you're like wrapped up in the story, but you keep dying over and over and over. So like if you put Uncharted on the highest difficulty and you have to replay the same scene 20 times, it's going to take you out of the scene. And all of a sudden you're worried about just getting to the next part and it's like taking you out of the story. So I don't like that. And I'm more towards doing that. Uh, I'm kind of the opposite. I like the difficulty modes for sure. Uh, I like when you, I like kind of having easy and normal. I think that that's fine. Yeah. Uh, specifically, like I played Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance on their easy difficulty, and it was awesome just to be able to fly through that. Same with Persona. Mm-hmm. Um, but my favorite difficulty modes are ones that aren't just okay. You take you know half as much damage, and enemies take double damage in this mode. This is normal. Hard is you take double damage, and they take half. Like I don't like that. I like when the game mode changes based on what you pick. So for instance, Persona. Uh, Persona 3 specifically I really liked the way they did it you got 10 items that fully revived your party and uh, revive you know revive them and healed them all yeah but you only had 10 of those for the entire game Hopefully. so like if you died and got a game over you might not want to use one because you mm-hmm. only you have a limited amount I thought that was cool my favorite on the other end of the spectrum uh, hard difficulty I like when like Resident Evil d- does it where 
the puzzles are all different now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Silent Hill also does this. The puzzles are different in the hard difficulty, and they the way you get guns in the I think it's called Maniac Mode on Resident Evil Seven is Mad different. Madhouse. Mad. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, the way you get guns is mm-hmm. different, and, and you encounter different enemies earlier, but you get better guns earlier and things like that. I think that that's a really cool way to do it, uh, so that you're not. It's not just a harder version mm-hmm. of the thing you already did. It reminds me a little bit of a Halo. Like, you put that on Legendary, and just all of a sudden, everything does way more damage. Yeah, it's Call of Duty, the worst one. Like, yeah. Call of oh, Duty, yeah, they're, 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 they're just, everybody's a sniper now. Like, this well, is, like I this said, is every, miles everyone's away. sniping you with grenades somehow, because you're getting <laughs> shot, and there's, like, you see the grenade indicator at your feet, and it's just... <laughs> there's, it, like, it's just a circle What, what was it used to say, Randy Johnson's throwing grenades at Yeah. Me? <laughs> That's what I. That was uh, Call of Duty Two because that was right when the 360 came yeah, out. Yeah, like and a we could play game. the demos in like Best Buys and places like that, and EB Games and wherever else. Yeah, it was just like you turn a corner and there's like six right there, and they're all like thrown yeah, right at your it was feet. Just a there, semicircle of grenades around. Yeah, I feel like first person shooters do that a lot. Like they're just like, oh, now it's impossible. Yeah, it's just now if you cheap. take a step, you die. Um, another one that I really like, Kingdom Hearts has something called critical mode, which basically you don't get experience mm-hmm. in that mode, but you pick, you get like all the abilities at the very start of the game and you pick what ones you want to go through the game with. And that's how you play the game. Mm-hmm. I think that that's a really interesting way to do it. Um, just ones that basically you can replay the game on that difficulty and it doesn't just feel like a harder version I like, of yeah, the game. Something different. I like Bioshock. the way sports games <laughs> do difficulty because they have sliders. So you can increase like how smart the it computer just gets is, smarter or you know, and stuff like that, uh, where you're you're kind of adjusting the difficulty how you want it to be difficult. So you have a little, little bit more control, uh, where you're not getting fouled every you know two steps you take or something like that. But you know, it's not like you can just take the ball or you know whatever sport you're playing and just like crush the computer where it gets boring like that. So I like the way sports games do it. That's true. They just get smarter, more responsive, basically. Huh? Yeah. And another game where I did enjoy playing it on the top difficulty was Mass Effect 2. Because the thing about it is uh, when you play it on easy normal, you don't have things like biotic barriers and shields and armor and stuff like that to worry about. But when you put on those difficult or bump it up basically in the difficulty, that's when you have to start worrying about what kind of defense each enemy has. And that's when it, uh, it boils down to I've got to pick the right team to go into the right mission this power is going to knock out this defense, this one's going to knock that one out, then I can shoot the guy and kill him. So it be, makes it more like a, a chess match or something like that where you have to attack just a single random relatively normal guy, but you have to like use strategy in it. So that bumped it up for me, and it wasn't like one shot, one kill sort of thing. Another one that that reminded me of is The Last of Us. Um, as yeah. you amp up the difficulty, you lose your listening mode, so you can't see people through walls anymore, mm-hmm. and all the resources are different, and there's much, 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 much less of them, mm-hmm. so it becomes like, it feels way more like a fight for your life, because you have literally one bullet for like 40 minutes, yeah. <laughs> and you, you need to know when to use it, and you can't see the thing through the wall and follow it like you can on the other difficulties and i know that's how they originally designed the game and mm-hmm. people were like this is way too hard way too like, difficult, yeah. all right it'll be our hard mode yeah some <laughs> games hard mode some games were i guess more like survival uh type games i don't like it when they not only make the enemies tougher like basically more bullet sponge like and they give you less ammo yeah like, that's you have why to resident do... evil sevens was so good they're yeah. like enemies are tougher you get more stuff. Yeah. Have fun. Oh, you, that's cool. you, yeah, you have to do one or the other. You can't do both because that's unreasonable. I think. Yeah, it's too much. Um, next question: Do you think adventure games nowadays have to be open world to be successful? Um, this is tough because adventure game means everything nothing now. and everything <laughs> that's a at word the same on, time. On everything, yeah. Um, if you go outside. With a purpose, <laughs> it's suddenly you are an adventure. An, anytime I go anywhere, yeah, an like Final Fantasy 15 is an adventure game. Um, I think two things when I think adventure game. The first thing I think is like Mist style games, like an actual adventure game, mm-hmm. uh, The Witness, things like that. Basically, those puzzle ga- broken age. Basically, like the point and click. You think about old school adventure games. Those are the definition when it started of an adventure game. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, typically, they're point and click adventures. You're doing puzzles. You use the water bottle with the belt, and for some reason, that's what works, and it unlocks the door somehow. Mm-hmm. Like MacGyver, like Grim Fandango, <laughs> things like that. The other type of adventure game is Uncharted, Tomb Raider, uh, things along those lines. That's when you have to slap the word action in front of it. Yeah, action exactly. Game. Those are action adventure mm-hmm. games as opposed to just walking around and doing stuff adventure games, I guess. I don't know. It's a normal day. Um, like, I, Firewatch is technically an adventure. I, yeah, I was yeah, going to say adventure, I think it's supposed to mean the gameplay isn't the core of the game. Like, you're not, it's not button combinations and it's not learning this mechanic and learning that it's just you are literally being taken on an adventure so it's more this is you good luck visual Mm -hmm. and it's more like storytelling in some ways and stuff like that whereas a action adventure puts all the buttons and the shooting and the combat and the puzzles and the whatever into it whereas adventure just means you know you're just kind of along for the ride yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah, I agree. That's with what that. it's supposed to mean, yeah. I think. That's what I think of. So Um, yeah, as far as that being said, no, I don't think it has to be open world. Like Broken Age, super successful, not open world. Um, you know, Grim Fandango, Machinarium, I would classify as an adventure game. Like there's tons of ones like that. Now, if you think about big budget like action adventure games, they're not open world, but they've definitely gotten less and less linear. All you have to do is look at Uncharted uh, mm-hmm. yeah. 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, where 4, there, it's there not open, open world areas, in any certain, you know, in any stretch of the imagination, but it is non-linear in how you tackle your objectives. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, yeah, I don't think it has to be. Yeah, you never open call it open world. I think world, there's but. a conception that it has to be, because there might sure be are a bunch of games coming out that are. Yeah, and probably don't have any business being um, even like Metal Gear Solid Five. It was just, it, I mean, it was open not, world, yeah, but I'm you not pick gonna, a mission and I'm not going to complain go about it part. because that was my favorite Metal Gear. But yeah, it just it did seem odd, I guess, that it was like that. And with maybe not so much Metal Gear, but I mean, some of the recent games that have been open world or sandbox, like you don't really want to compete with those. So I don't know. There's a lot of good tr- ones. Though. Try something else, I think. But yeah, I think there's a conception that it it has to be open world nowadays. Yeah, I I, th- I really think that uh, or something with like a hub world or something like that. Well, Kevin loves hub world. I do love hub world. That's <laughs> why the new Shantae is just fantastic. Um, but yeah, I I don't think it has to be open world to be no, successful be. in any. And once again, success is measured by so like Machinarium's a small point and click adventure style game, yeah. but. I still think that I like that's a successful game, it, yeah. but it's just not on the scale. Or you can of, like, just be Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, I was going to made say, a lot more money, but also cost a lot and took them ten years. You can be Final Fantasy 15 and just do both. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the releases, Gareth. Uh, we, we were recording a little early. I was like, "Hey, you think you can get this done?" And he's like, "Absolutely not." And then I was like, hey, we're recording a little later than we thought. And he's like, I'll go do it. So I knew he'd come in handy. I thought we had four releases. What a guy. I think we have 14. This is a lot more than four pages. <laughs> it's not even two. I see two. <laughs> two see full it. pages. <laughs> so what do we got this coming week? Uh, nothing. Okay. February 13th. How to Survive 2 for the X-Bone. A zombie survival RPG featuring crafting, base building, and co-op multiplayer set 15 years after the events in the original How to Survive. Uh, How to Survive 2 takes place in Louisiana where the zombie infestation has become a global catastrophe and small group groups desperately struggle to survive and create some kind of new normal seat of life. I think that's where Resident Evil 7 takes place is in Louisiana. So uh, yeah, not a wonderful state to be in right now, it seems like. There's zombies everywhere. It just sounds like Walking Dead to me, but anyway. Ugh. February 14th, Sniper Elite 4 for the X-Bone and the PC. Set in the aftermath of its award-winning predecessor, Sniper Elite 4 continues the series World War II heritage by transporting players across the beautiful Italian peninsula. Uh, covert agent and elite marksman Carl Fairburn must fight alongside the brave men and women of the Italian resistance to help free their country from the yoke of fascism. Uh, Ride 2 for the X-Bone and PS4. Welcome to the Temple of Motorcycles, the only digital garage that will allow you to discover, transform, and test the world's fastest two-wheeled vehicles. 
Over 170 bikes are included in this update, updated racing game. Uh, Ride 2 will include a variety of different environmental tracks to test, even the most experienced r- racers. MX Nitro for the PC and PS4. Um, motocross racing game. Uh, perform bone-breaking stunts to get the Nitro boost you need to win. Uh, you'll need to ride fast, fly high, and hit combos with the most death-defying tricks you can master. Bridge Constructor for the PS Vita. Are you getting this? I'm sure not. It's a Vita game, though. I'm aware. Oh. Uh, bridge Constructor Playground offers people of all ages an introduction to the topic of bridge building. <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> so it's a bridge game. Uh, Vertical Drop Heroes HD for the X-Bone, PS4, and PS Vita. Uh, Vertical Drop Heroes is a procedural platformer RPG hybrid with roguelike elements. (laughs) Is Uh, it an adventure game, though? Sounds like it. Uh, Where your hero adventures through randomly generated stages. (laughs) It is an adventure game. (laughs) Roguelike is another key word that's flaring up here. Late last couple months. Yeah. Soon, so real big roguelike. Is I don't like roguelike games. Yeah. I mean, well, you might like the other seventeen <laughs> genres and just come <laughs> mention. So. <laughs> Procedural platformer RPG hybrid roguelike. Yeah. I do like just platformers. Cover all your bases, folks. This is a game. That's all I got. Uh, Battle Islands Commanders for the X Bone and PC. From the creators of the popular World War II strategy game Battle Islands comes a head-to-head combat game. Uh, take part in major World War II battles and Battle Islands commanders from the sandy dunes of North Africa to the bitter cold of the Eastern Front in this Clash of Clans style game. I like it. Uh, for Honor for the PS4, X-Bone, and PC. Nick, you played this, didn't you? A uh, bit. I've watched it played. Uh, I haven't bothered with the yeah, beta because cause the worst part about playing it on PC is... You play, so I'd rather not mess with that until I have to, basically. But I mean, I've watched it enough, and I know what's going on. So. Yeah, like I, the en- concept is pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it. Like it was fine, but yeah. it's not something I would ever purchase. I've got cool. a person or two, maybe more, uh, to play with, and it's not just a one-on-one game. It's two v two, three v three. So I've got some people to just. Basically, I'm going to try and not take it super seriously, even though it's a super technical game, and just kind of have fun, screw it, around. And not it's get gonna angry. Be ve- it's going to be very Maybe. difficult to do that. Let, That's let not going to work. You. I know you. That's not going to work. <laughs> I'm, I it's going to be very difficult. It didn't work for me. I get, I get competitive sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do sometimes. Like, the one-on-one mode was my favorite, though. I very much enjoyed that. Well, we can do that without a game. But I don't, it's, it's so different, and I like you know having access to samurai and Vikings and stuff like that. I don't know. It just feels like I ought to play it. And I think the most recent beta was also allowed on Steam. So if I can circumvent Uplay... No, you be, still gotta I'll, use Uplay. Yeah, I'll be as happy. As it, it requires it, but yeah, Uplay sucks. It's yeah, I had literally to, the worst. Platform. I had to log into the thing on my PlayStation to play it. Uplay. Oh, okay. So no, I mean, it requires like I have a hard copy of the division. You still have to go through Uplay. Yeah, it's the worst platform <laughs> ever. <laughs> uh, what's next? Uh, Semi Spheres for the PS4 and PC. Semi Spheres is a meditative parallel puzzle game that places dual realities at the heart of its challenge. Its unique single-player split-screen mechanic challenges your brain by putting in control of two characters at the same time. Uh, your left and right <laughs> side must work together to unfold the mystery by solving clever puzzles in an entrancing ambience. Using portals and other abilities to avoid centuries, devise and execute your plan, reuniting the parallel wars of semispheres. That sounds like a Kevin game. Uh, yeah, there's a game called Brothers that I really, really, really like where you control both characters separately. Uh, and at first you start and you're like, I'm retarded. <laughs> like it, it's very hard to wrap your mind around, but then once you get it, uh, it's really neat. I love that game. So we'll buy this one. Two screens at the same time, man. <sighs> Think of the main button. <laughs> uh, Toy Odyssey Lost and Found for the PS4. Toy Odyssey the Lost and Found is a Metroidvania style action platformer that takes you back to a world made from the nightmares of your childhood. Join Brand, an action figure that has come to life in his fight against the darkness to save his owner, Felix. Nightmares are only the start of his troubles. Brand needs to uncover the secrets of the house before it's too late. Is it the Brand from League of Legends? No, it is not. Well, Not interested. It may be. I don't know. 
I love Brand. He gets his own spinoff. <laughs> Is he an action figure? Uh, no. No, he's he a burns f- stuff. He lights things on fire. That's why I like him. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard Band Footage Volume 2. Uh, the second DLC for a game that's been out like four weeks. Not even. Was it three weeks? Four weeks. Uh, this DLC features 21 and daughters. We need to play Deadly Game of 21. Huh, that sounds awful. <laughs> Not, not like the playing that game for your life sounds awful. <laughs> February 15th, The Wardrobe for PC. Uh, inspired by the great 90s classics such as Monkey Island, Day of the Tentacle, Tony Tough, and mm. Sam and Max Hit, An hit the Road. An adventure game. <laughs> yes. The Wardrobe is a point-and-click adventure game with a strong sense of humor, but isn't shy about dealing with mature and non-politically correct themes. I'm but down. where's the lion and the witch? Is that, all, we, is that all we got? What? That's all it says about it. That's that's all it is. I say it. I wanted more. That's an adventure game. <laughs> we'll, we'll go look it up. Army Gals for PC. Army Gals is a visual novel set at a retreat for delinquents. The protagonist is forced to attend after a misunderstanding back at home. Expecting a fortnight of hell, he is pleasantly surprised to find he is sharing the retreat with three beautiful but very different young women. Have fun, Kevin. <laughs> all right. <laughs> is it in VR? <laughs> it doesn't say. It just says PC. Damn. February 16th. The Hunter, Call of the Wild, PC. Uh, the most immersive hunting experience set in an open world teeming with game from graceful deer to hulking bison. 50 square miles of hunting ground is available, offering a rich single-player hunting experience with the option for multiplayer, either cooperative or competitive with up to eight players. Does that mean you're hunting other people? Is that VR? <laughs> I just want to hear him to say hulking biceps. <laughs> <laughs> bison. bison. <laughs> not hulking biceps. We're not talking about Arnold. Uh, dynamic weather, day and night cycles, simulated ballistics. Huh. Glow sticks. Ballistics. Oh, I thought you said glow sticks. Simulated I was suddenly interested. <laughs> simulated <laughs> glow sticks. <laughs> Homebound for the PC. A uh, beautiful and chilling virtual reality experience set in the cold void of space. Following a series of catastrophic events, you were left to crash. Rapi- you were left to crash rapidly toward Earth. Uh, your mission is simply to survive with time rapidly depleting. Cool. Real politics for the PC. A real-time grand strategy set in the modern and near future Earth, where you take control of a nation and wield diplomacy, espionage, military, and economic power to achieve your ends. What about alternative facts? That's always important. <laughs> Uh, February 17th, Typo Man Revised for the X-Bone. Typo Man is a two-dimensional puzzle platformer distinguished by a unique game world. You slip into the role of the hero, struggling to make your way through a dark, surreal world. Despite your small stature, you have a powerful gift. You can use letters to alter your environment. Hmm. Be the hero and set out on the journey to become whole and gain the powers you need to defeat the giant evil demon that rules the world you are trapped in. Uh, Last, we get Blackwood Crossing for the X-Bone and the PC. Blackwood Crossing is a story-driven, first-person adventure game. Uh, You play as Scarlet, a teenager finding her way in the world. You wake up disoriented to find yourself and your younger brother, Finn, inexplicably traveling on a moving train. Uh, But when a mysterious figure appears, it becomes clear that this is no ordinary train ride. Navigating this powerful drama where the world and your abilities develop in extraordinary ways. Will you stop doing that? <laughs> no, I will not. Uh, you keep putting them over here, I'll keep putting them over there. So is there anything uh, coming up this week that you're excited for? Anything we talked about? Any games you're ready to play? Games I'm ready to play? I'm ready? Yeah, like going to play. Not this week, no. I'm ready mm. for next week. Mm. What's next week? Halo Wars 2, I believe. Mm. Yeah, that's true. How about you? You're just diving for back Honor. into the... So you are getting For Honor, yeah. even though you're playing Neo. Yeah. Nick's Th- this train everywhere. don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't finished Tales. I haven't even come close to Yakuza. I'm sure oh that's. Gosh. I do want to try sixty Honor. hours. I'm very curious. Um, Mostly because those guys made the sword. Neo like. seems three times longer than the Souls games, and yeah, for Honor, this like I said, it don't stop. Oh my gosh! I just got to quit doing stuff other than working and sleeping, and you have to not quit gaming. sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> how else am I gonna finish this stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Quit Before your job. Mass Effect and yeah, Persona. The show worst up. part of this is probably around summer when Persona Five 
finally cools off a little bit after like a uh, second or third playthrough, um, then I can get back into these games. But they're all going to be like fifty percent done, and relearning you Neo is going to be at. a pain. Impossible. Picking tails back up and be like, well, what was it doing? What's the uh, story? How do, I, how do I combo things in Tails? Uh, and stuff like that is going to be interesting because. Yeah, it's literally at least one game a week. I'm, I think the week that Halo comes out is the same week that Berserk comes out. So that's another. Yeah, uh, I got problems. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think I've got Halo the twenty first and then the twenty eighth. But yeah, at least until Tuesday, we get that. Uh, I'm gonna play the nuts out of Neo as much as I can, and then For Honor. But For Honor is not something you really play like fifty hours a weekend. It's kind of like, hey, let's get some matches in. Hey, right. let's get some matches in. And like yeah. I said, I'm gonna base it more along someone else getting online and doing like some one V ones either with them or climbing the two V two ladder or something like that. So that's kind of a drop in and play sort of thing. Come jump in be my friend. Yeah. yeah I just want to uh, platinum Shantae cause uh, apparently I can do it in about another hour and a half. Uh, Good luck. Or I won't have it done. I guess two hours and a half. And then um, I'm thinking I'm wanting to jump into some survival horror games, some older survival horror games particularly. So yeah, hopefully next week I'll have some of those to talk about. I have some that are still sealed uh, that, that I've been wanting to play some Vita ones and such. So yeah, I was looking at Xenoverse too. I need to play that. So it's not a survival horror game. So I know, but it's really good. <laughs> so anyway, that's it for this episode of the press X podcast. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and share and subscribe to get alerted whenever all of our new videos go live. Thank you for being here. Kellen? Yeah. Thank you for being here. Nick? It's late. And thank you so much for watching. We'll speak with you next time. Is it late? Is he a liar? It's not early. It is early in the morning. Talk? Because I mix these mics all up. Talk? Hello. I don't talk that loud. One, two, three, four. I don't do what you tell me Get to do. Get your booty on the floor. Five, six, seven, eight. I hate you. Both Fine, of you. Fine, don't sing. <laughs> He's no fun. Why would I, I sing? <laughs>